the positive thing is that there is a realization that it cannot continue this way. We have what it takes to fix it. And the conversation is already begun Again. on what do we realistically do to be able to get the Africa Union to take charge of the affairs of our continent. Let me give you a case, a yeah. case in point. We decided, for example, that we are going to assemble our, uh, our market using the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Market yes, uh, that's uh, good ec Ecosystem. Yeah. And the, the positive thing is that it was unbelievable at the rate at which we were able to achieve consensus and we were able to achieve ratification. And I want to tell you, it is among the things that happened in the shortest time possible. It tells you there is greater realization that unless we act in concert, unless we act together, we are unlikely to make any impact anywhere. How so uh, we, we have, at least on the market issue, we have put that together. There is a debate that is going to evolve. Like, for example, we have also decided that it will not going to be business as usual. We have these meetings, Africa-US uh, meeting, Africa-Europe, Africa-Turkey, Africa-India. Uh, now we are waiting for, there is another one, Africa-Russia. And Africa-Japan. And Africa-Japan. We have made the decision that it is not intelligent for 54 of us to go and uh, sit before one gentleman from another place and I mean, and, and sometimes we are, we are mistreated. Uh, yeah. You know, we are loaded into buses, like school kids, you know? And, and it's, not, it's not right. Well, you are it's summoned, not, you know? It's not, it's, not, so? it's, not, it's not right. So the decision that we have made as AU is that going forward, if there is going to be a discussion between Africa and any other country, we are going to be represented by the chair, the outgoing chair, the income, the bureau. Let us let chair us the commission and, and the chair and and, uh, and and the chair of the RECs, and we have five RECs. That uh -huh. should be sufficient okay. for, I mean, a meeting of uh, maybe six, seven, maybe six, seven. Yeah. That should be able to represent Africa, and that is the position I am taking as the president of Kenya. For any other meeting that we are going to have with all these uh, requests that we have a, a meeting between Africa and one other country. We respect the sovereignty of others. I yeah. think to ask for, to be, for uh, reciprocation is not to ask for too much. No. And for us to agree that let us have this kind of uh, setup. The only, um, uh, because I had a conversation with President Kagame and he, he actually led that particular position. I have had a conversation with Prime Minister Abiy. He believes very strongly that that should be the position mm. of, of our continent. Because, as you have said, if we, didn't, if we don't respect ourselves, nobody is going to respect us. And, and we should be able to take that kind of decision. Yeah. And part of that uh, respecting ourselves is when we say African problems, African solutions, we, we must be serious about the solutions. It cannot be rhetoric. It cannot be talk. It must be accompanied by what realistically and practically we are doing. And with our capacity, yeah. No, this is wonderful, but I, well, just one question. Why are you having this discussion in closed rooms? Why don't you bring civil society, all those people, in this discussion? Because we can also bit, put pressure on our leaders or whatever to behave in a better way. African people need to tell their presidents we care about Africa. That should be a priority. Unless we act really together, it doesn't work. And in the reform agenda of, of the African Union, if you, are, you and your colleagues are proceeding that way, there need to be really a serious discussion about the structures and how Africa is... And, and, one problem is African countries refuse to cede any sovereignty to the African Union. So African Union cannot sign a trade agreement in behalf of Africa. Then 
the African Union go and meet the European Union. This, this is not balanced. It is not. Because those guys had... 27 uh, countries, uh, 20... And gave them sovereignty. Yes. But our guys here don't want to give any sovereignty, uh, cede it to, to cede any sovereignty to the, to the Union, as if, you know, this is something very uh, fantastic they have to keep. When countries like Germany, like Sweden, big countries, agreed to cede ceremony, uh, sorry, sovereignty to the collective body because they are smart, they think when they are together, they negotiate better deals. Are you the saying? only stupid guys, unfortunately, are the British, who left that <laughs> collection. And, but, look, I'm, I'm free to say that because I'm also a British citizen, and so I have my views about what's happening in Britain. I know we have British... Uh, Ah, the high co Jane is there, the High Commissioner, and, and the Archbishop. And I have the Minister here also. <laughs> but do you agree with me it was a mistake to leave the European Union? <laughs> you agree? <laughs> You're going to lose your job, I think. <laughs> anyway, BBC is not here, don't worry. <laughs> Nobody watch Kenya TV, so don't worry. <laughs> anyway, so... so no, joke, I, I, it's not a joke. I mean, it is truth. I mean, it is, it is a mistake. Together, we're stronger. We, we do things better. And that's what we need, the African people, to press their governments. We need to be stronger. We need to have our union. We need to see some of our sovereignty for the African Union. I'm not, I'm not losing sovereignty because our collective sovereignty is huge. Is huge. Then we are somebody which can be respected around the world. We go out there in Europe, oh, we Africans, we Africans. I will ask you, what do you mean you are Africans? You are South African, you are Nigerian, you are, what, what do you mean you are Africans? Where is your government? Where's, what decisions you are able to make? What, what is Africa? Hmm. Unless we have an African Union and a, a joint, a will, and, and then we, we, it doesn't work. So we, you made commitments now in front of all these people who are going to fight for that case. Is that correct? You have my commitment. And, 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 it not, and, and not just me, by ah. the way. I think a critical mass of African readers is building on what we, how we should act together. I told you, this particular position of consolidating what we need to do and how we need to engage with the rest of the world was actually driven by President Kagame. Excellent. We have, we have asked, we, we've talked with many other heads of state, and I think there is a critical mass emerging that we need to act differently, we need to work smart. Uh, let me tell you of an unfortunate situation. I visited one of the countries, I don't want to say which one, <laughs> uh, and we were having a conversation about the um, economic partnership agreement between ESC and the EU. Yeah. The EU, 27 countries, 520 million people have agreed on what we need to do. ESC, we have sizable, 170 million people. Then uh, one country, and I don't want to say which one, told, uh, refused to sign. So he said, no, you know, we need to teach these people some lesson. So I'm listening. Your country has 11 million people. What are you going now to do? Now we know the country. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are you going to teach 520 million people who are supposed to serve as your market? Really? You know? So sometimes we undermine our own case yeah. because of not acting properly. So... I want to promise you that uh, it is our challenge. The realization alone that we have a problem is halfway the solution from where I sit. So we, we know that we have to change stuff. We know that we have to act in, in a manner that makes sure that we secure our interests because the whole discussion, the whole discourse is about interest. What is our interest? How do we protect our interests? Because everybody protects theirs. Yeah. So this is um, uh, awakening, and, and, uh, and I think the engagement of Africa with the rest of the globe is going to change. That is why, for example, we are having 
the Climate Action Summit because we want to go to the UN. We want to come to the, the UN General Assembly. We want to go to COP28 with a, an African consolidated position, speaking with one voice, the whole lot of us, so that people can know we know what we want and we, we will not back this down. This is one thing. If any value <laughs> to this discussion is, I think we reached some interesting commitment from the president here. <laughs> no, it's useful, the commitment made by the president. My only suggestion is that mobilize the people, have trust in the people, because the pressure from the people can help reduce. Get the civil society into your summit. Get them to press their governments to really to move behind you in this agenda, because that has to happen. And until you get the people behind you, everybody will drag their feet. And for that's the history of Africa. I agree with you 100% that we need to mobilize the people to, to, to be with us, yeah. to share the, the vision with us, to agree with us on uh, the paradigm yeah. shift in what we need to do. Yeah. We need civil... I agree with you, the civil society have a big role to play, to play. Yeah. because uh, they, can, they can do sometimes what governments cannot do. Yeah. And, and even in Kenya, we have a robust... Uh, civil society. They have made a huge contribution to who we are today. Yeah. Sometimes as governments we agree with them, sometimes we don't agree with them, but that is the nature of life. Uh, all I ask of uh, our good friends in the civil society space, including you Mo, is always yes. to look out for the interests of the people of our continent and not sometimes to play to the gallery of the people who pay your check. <laughs> what are you voting for? <laughs> what you guys are voting for? <laughs> if you enjoy this video, don't forget to share your comments below and subscribe to our channel for more exciting videos coming up.